Hey everyone, hey, welcome back to yet another episode of Battle Rap Resume. This is your host, Tom Quee. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you want to help support the show, please follow us at Battle Rap Resume. Get in touch, battleresume at gmail.com. You can get in touch on the Twitter as well. If you want to come on, you want to do something, you want to do top five e-crowns or something, I might reject you if you want to do top five e-crowns, but you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's in it's in the poll for someday. Uh, Patreon as well. If you want to help support us, um, patreon.com forward slash battle resume. Everything that goes on the channel goes in there first. You want to help support, you want to help this grand architecture of uh, battle rap podcasting, and you want to give back because you appreciate the show. It's greatly appreciated in return. Patreon.com forward slash battle rap resume. Um, leave us a review on iTunes as well. Um, we have merch coming soon. It may already be out um, in the time of this episode going because we're recording quite a few at the moment. But uh, yeah, hats, etc. Um, you know. I'm sure there'll be links there if you uh, know where to find them. So, um, yeah, um, you know, my guest today is uh, the type of guest that I always love um, to welcome to the podcast. Someone with, you know, uh, pardon the pun, an outspoken word, uh, you know, kind of fixation there. And uh, oh, Tom, no, not oh dear, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the quality of heirloom. But give me, give me a break, man. Okay, but, all right, all right. But, um... <laughs> Uh, I, I, Shonda, Sorry, Ro- I Shonda, how's it going? Camera. No, it's all good, Shonda. How, how's it going? I had, a, I, had a, I had a grand intro planned, but uh, Shonda, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I haven't been called that in a long time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. And like, I one of the things that I love is kind of origins of names and, and why did you pick this? Because, you know, I, I've got to admit, I was a little ignorant. When I saw the name on the card, you know, I thought, okay, S, Z. You know, uh, <laughs> sort of saw what you were doing, um, but then realizing that you know, based on an award-winning, incredible, um, you know, screenwriter, right, uh, CV series creator, Shonda Rhimes. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the, probably, probably, arguably, one of the most powerful Black women in the world right now. Um, that's why I picked her. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, um, and I mean Shonda Rhimes. I mean, the, the screenwriter, I should say, uh, n- not not the roundhouse winning, you know, battle rapper. Um, she's created yeah. tons of shit, right? I mean, Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder. She was just hired by Netflix. Like, all of her stuff's going to be on Netflix for good now. Like, it's she's a powerhouse. You know, she's pretty badass. Unbelievable. So like... I was trying to channel, channel that kind of... Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was what yeah. was going on. Um, Mm -hmm. was just woefully lost on the majority of the battle rap community. Um, Everyone just thought I was going for a really cringe, like, um, (laughs) parody of of, of, of rap Mm -hmm. type Mm -hmm. thing, Um, which I get, you know, if you didn't didn't know who she was, then that's what you'd assume. But um, that's cool. I think think people grew to like the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, And... I mean, uh, you know, talk to me about early writing, you know, not even rap or anything or battling. Like, you know, had you always been writing since you were young or? Yeah, I've I've, I've been writing for a long time. I've always loved it. Um, So definitely an automatic thing for me. I'm always, I've always got various things, various documents up on my laptop. Um, Always have a notebook in my bag. So Mm. yeah, I'm always, I'm always writing. Mm. Mm. There's something so great about capturing a moment, isn't there, in a notebook and just thinking, that's quite rich, I'm going to mine that later. I mean, I never sit and think, what a rich observation <laughs> I just made about okay. the world or the human condition. No, 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 no. I just mean what you're capturing uh, and you can sort of use it yeah, later. I mean, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. which is why I like to have a notebook on me because I'm not someone that can retain things like that. By the time I've gone home, that idea or that that image will have fallen out of my brain. So I need to write things as and when they wander into my head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, uh, way before the Shonda persona, you know, you you, you were, you know, doing spoken words, say having incredible success through it. I mean, for those who maybe know you more as a battle rapper, it's like, you know, you won the roundhouse slam, which is like, you know, I mean, I went out in the first round. Actually, I crashed out in the first round the year before, so I'm not bitter. Um, but it, <laughs> but it, but it is like a huge thing, seriously, isn't it? Like it's a it's a, it's a Mercury Award, if you will. Oh, I mean, wow! I don't. I guess okay. You know, to be fair, as far as slams go in this country, it's definitely one of the most prestigious ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll say that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually judged by other poets as opposed to just random audience members. So there is a sense of esteem to having won it, to have been considered um, the best by 
people who are either your peers or are people that you aspire to. Mm. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good slam to win for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, with, with the majority of spoken word poets, and you know, a lot of stuff is on YouTube, kind of like mm-hmm. y- y- your battles in a sense, your uploads. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, you know, if anyone wants to go back and check that stuff out, um, definitely search for it. But you know, after the slam, I mean, mm. y- you know. Was that the point when you started to take things more seriously, more professionally, poet-wise? You were like, this is what oh, I want no. to do now? Or, no. But by that point, I was already a professional, really. Right. Yeah. So you were cheating, Kai. Oh, well, I guess you weren't cheating. But... No, I wasn't cheating. Okay. I wasn't che- I, I resent that. I resent that. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> um, there's nothing that states that... Uh, no, no, no. You have to, you have yeah. to be an... And, and, uh, it's, you can't really define amateur mm. in this arts world. Do you know what I mean? Um so yeah it's an interesting one um i I think getting paid you're not an amateur i guess if you if you're paid yeah i guess so i guess so um but i think there's an assumption that with youth comes you know inexperience Mm. so you know the 16 to 25 age range actually by the age of 25 i can't remember when i won it was i 23 or something 2014 so when was that for you uh i would have been 22 23, 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um and you know i'd already been doing it since i was 18 hmm. so yeah i've been doing spoken word or whatever you want to call it for quite a while by that point um so yeah i mean you know i do look back and i'm like oh it's definitely a different level that i was at compared to a lot of poets that were there that maybe had been doing it for a few months or hmm. a year or a couple of years um and you have that in a lot of slams, like, you know, the levels that people are at are very, are really varied. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely, and that's why I would never do a slam anymore. There's no need for me to really, it's because it's, it's a stepping stone to bigger things in my opinion. Um, but also it isn't really like, you know, what, what do I get from going up there with eight years experience and then probably discouraging someone who's only just started doing it, thinking that somehow they don't have the the relativity to know that, you know, I've been doing it X amount of time and they've mm. only just started out. And, you know, it definitely needs to be a, an environment for people to, to, to find their feet, to work out who, what their voice is. And yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm not really, mm. I, you won't really find me at a slam again in that capacity at least and you you mentioned that as an environment as a nurturing environment but like as a physical environment as well um which is where we find ourselves with blizzard um i mean before we get into the battle before we get into how you got to battling just uh, that roundhouse room um there's something quite special about it isn't there yeah it's a nice space it's a nice space i've seen it in lots of different ways Mm. um i've done my one woman show in there obviously completely different in setup to the battle that was sexy was it yeah Mm -hmm. Um, so that's just set up like a sort of studio space theater um audience facing um one end of the room rather than this sort of pit style thing that you have for a battle event um but yeah it's a nice little space and it can be whatever you want it to be to a certain extent um Mm -hmm. which is cool yeah Mm -hmm. i mean i don't think rooms rooms are rooms they're vessels and you know the people that are in them make it what they want want to make it without that sounding too corny sure. but yeah sure. no no that's true that is true yeah definitely i mean the globe theater you know how base was that but how wonderful yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. and there's lots of i mean look at the fiddler's elbow you know like, <laughs> what's that at? but you know yeah, you, yeah. You, you, that you is our globe theater that yeah. love battle rap mm-hmm. yeah you put a bunch of people that love battle rap in that space and it's the most alive vibrant incredible space you could be in you mm-hmm. know so it's not about the space itself it's about what people what people bring to it and the energy they have and yeah all of that stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah yeah no this is uh this is fresh insight you don't get this sort of stuff with blunt ted so this is uh this is very who's, very who's who's blunt ted you don't know who blunt ted is nah he's like sorry he's like king, of, <laughs> king of the world's legend well i mean why would you know who he but yeah he's um Shout out Blunted. He's been on the show a few times, a bit of a cult hero. But yeah, he's a very interesting battler. And uh, he wouldn't discuss spaces, but you know. Um, let, right. Let, uh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. one of the many differences between me and your average battle rapper. Um, so, yeah, yeah, and I want to yeah. I want to, I wanna pinpoint, you know, um, this moment when you become sentient of battle rap in general, I suppose, before you try it yourself. Like, what was your early experiences with it, if any? I've been aware of it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um 
because you know I know Mark Grace he's a friend of mine oh yeah so uh I knew about his battles obviously Harry Baker's a friend of mine as well so knew that he battled before either of them battled I was peripherally aware of don't flop I saw a few videos they made me chuckle that was kind of the extent of it who did you but watch I, I, who did I watch mm. Oh, I don't know. Just uh, one of Luna C's jokes, just like yeah. Do you know what I mean? The class, the classic <laughs> oh, ones, yeah. the viral ones. Um, well, I don't know if any of them had ever gone viral before. Mark and Lizard, no, the, the UK ones. I mean, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. I just, I just watched the the, the popular ones. You know, whatever. Yeah. I, I, it made me chuckle. It made me wince a little bit. But you know, I had way. I took issue with certain aspects of it mm-hmm. but i also found it you know, you know a nice little bit of entertainment but that was that was the extent of it really um i definitely wouldn't call myself a fan familiarity uh then with grist and and harry and stuff like that and also just being mm-hmm. aware of it tangentially yeah. virally yeah, yeah you know what 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 was the concrete moment what was the i want to have a go no i didn't want to have a fucking go harry right. baker fucking dobbed me in didn't he <laughs> He freaking, <laughs> he told the producer of the event, the Poets versus Rappers event, oh, yeah, Vanessa will do it. And then I get an email like, oh, blah, blah, Harry says you'll do this battle. And Harry's, I'm like, Harry says I'm going to do what now? Mm. Um, so <laughs> there was no, I did not voluntarily um, offer myself for, for this. Um and then, you know, I got, I got like, you know, co well, encouraged, coerced, insert the appropriate word here. Um, yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe it will be great. Um, and, you know, sort of, you know, do the things that scare you, blah, blah, blah. It's a good rule to live by in life. Um, so yeah, there was no, that I did not put myself forward. I definitely got thrown into it. <laughs> And you went up against the guy Blizz. I mean, legend. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't pick Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Um, Blizzard was was assigned to me, and I of course knew who he was because of Mark. So I was like, "Fuck it, hell." Um, but yeah, yeah, that was that was how that all came about, and uh, yeah. <laughs> And, and through through doing you know so many gigs and performances and you know rehearsing so much for your own material anyway. Was it easier to to kind of you know to edit and then to put to memory or? Well, I can't really compare it to anything else because I don't know what it would be like to do it if I weren't a performer because I always have been to some extent. Mm. Um, so I don't know whether it would be easier or harder. I mean, perhaps it would be easier in the sense that you you haven't got a particular way that you write that you're then having to. Um, deviate from mm. because um the, the the method that one uses to, to to write for a battle rap and prepare for a battle rap are very different to what i would use to prepare for the other things that i do um and editing is incredibly difficult because of the way things have to rhyme and the 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 structure of it all is so much more um engineered than my poetry is of course there are poets that rhyme who are very influenced by hip-hop whatever they would probably um make the transition to battle rap a lot easier than i would i mean for example adam the rapper who i'm sure you're familiar with oh, yeah. um in our scene we know him as adam Cameling. he transitions very seamlessly to battle rap because that's the way he writes anyway right mm. um not so much for me. So the editing process was very difficult because I'd cut a line and then that would make the next four lines not make sense. So it was almost like you couldn't edit without having to like start again a lot of the time, um, which made it very difficult for me. Um, so yeah, I, 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 there's something to be said for the fact that maybe it would have been easier if I, if I hadn't written anything before, and I was just starting at square one. Um, but it certainly makes it easier because I'm, you know, I, I'm used to writing creatively. I'm used to retaining things fairly quickly, committing stuff to memory. Um, so, yeah, there were things that made it easier and things that m- perhaps made it harder for me. But it's hard to tell. You feeling nervous when the, when the battle's announced, the cameras are rolling, you're on stage above? Yeah, no, it's fucking terrifying. It's, it's one of the fucking scariest things I've ever done in my life. Like, by far. 
I can't I can't even explain to you how scared I was. Like I wanted to fucking cry shit, faint, vomit. <laughs> Every single visceral bodily response right. one can have to fear. My body wanted to do it. Um yeah, no, I, I was I was fucking terrified. I was terrified for weeks beforehand. The whole day of the actual battle, I wa- I wanted I want I wanted to bail. I was so fucking scared. And that feeling never went away. I mean, it was never as strong as with the first battle, but like mm. all the other battles as well. Actually, not really with the Jay Short one, to be fair, because it was a short one minute rounder because um, Dan could cancelled like the day before. So it was just chill. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, it, oh, it's, it's so fucking scary. And I'm not, I'm really not a woman that scares easily. I've done some pretty scary stuff in my life, but yeah, pfft, nah, fuck that. No more grime lines or hard rhymes. No time to be in the booth. No way. He'd rather be at a breakfast buffet. Blizz wouldn't dream of skipping leg day. It's his favourite bit of chicken. <laughs> Listen. Listen. You're about as popular as Jeremy Hunt in a hospital ward. You're about as cool as James Blunt singing Kumbaya, my lord, in a bottle green Ford Focus rocking crocodile skin loafers. You're about as cool as James Blunt singing Kumbaya, my lord, in a bottle green Ford Focus rocking crocodile skin loafers. <laughs> You're bound to spout some tired shit, I'm gonna take no notice. This may be my first battle, but I'm gonna fucking own this. And when I slaughter you, <laughs> when I actually think about it, it, it it's, it's not a healthy <laughs> thing to put oneself through. Um, I think the only time where the, the, the feeling of fear was compensated by the the euphoria afterwards was after blizzard after that i don't think the balance was quite there sure <laughs> like the, the 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 fear for three weeks does not it does not is not made up for like afterwards you just you just relieved that it's over but there's no for me at least there was no sense of oh okay like i i know why i've done this to myself i know why i've put myself through this for three weeks like it was just just so fucking scary and i respect i respect these dudes that put them well and you know the occasional woman huh? that put themselves through that again and again and i think that's probably because the payoff for them is bigger than it is than it was for me because mm. it's just so and you can't prepare yourself for what this person might say to you with every other performance you know exactly what's going on you know what you're going to say if you're acting with other people on stage you know what they're going to say you know what's going to happen with battle raps. You can be as prepared as you like, but you don't know what this person's going to say to you. And it's just, yeah, it's terrifying. And in terms of subject matter in the first blizzard, you know, he's very blunt. He can be a very poetic dude, but he he's kind of hammering home the, the obvious nails. If quite successfully, um, mm. you're a woman, fuck feminism, um, you know, hipster poetry. It's It's quite broad, wasn't it? Yeah, and to be quite frank, and you know, I I don't think Blizzard would disagree with me with this because I've watched I watch a lot of his battles to prepare. He's extremely talented. He's mm. he's a very adept grime MC. You know, he's got a flow and a style that I knew I wasn't going to be able to match. So I just knew I had to come with my own sort of irreverent whatever. But I think. He could have gone a lot. He could have been much harsher on me. He didn't say anything to me that that, that dented me even a tiny bit. Sure. You know what I mean? He really, he really didn't go in like he like he could have done and should have done, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, he went for the obvious stuff, but he didn't go for the obvious stuff in a way that felt particularly uh, cutting, at mm. least in my opinion. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was nothing. There was nothing that he said that that made me go, "Ooh, like, oh, you've really like, <laughs> you've really got me." Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, because, like I told you, like I was preparing for the absolute worst, like the most sexist, the most racist, the most, you know, I'd prepared yeah. myself mentally for that. So it all felt very, it all felt very surface level. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I suppose mm. you know it, it's Blizzard. He's a good lad as well. He's not necessarily. Oh, he always oh, he's, he's lovely. Oh, yeah. What a lovely guy. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the man. Um, and you're harsh on him. Uh, this lovely guy, Blizz. Um, you're gonna. Leave... <laughs> I mean, you you go. <laughs> you you kind of had. 
I don't know, like, it's a, it's a comment topic, Blizzard's weight, you know, it's horrible, the things people say. Um, you say his body's looking a little shoddy? Oh, I mean, oh, God. Big I don't reaction. Even really... Oh, I know, which is lame, because it's, it's pretty, like, you know, it's pretty ABC mm-hmm. shit. You know, the further I got into Battle Rap, the more I realised that, you know, like, one-syllable rhymes like that are not really, like, how how you get your respect in the battle rap world um so yeah a lot of the stuff that i wrote for that battle was pretty uh pretty basic but i think i delivered it with conviction mm-hmm. i delivered it with sass and people just went with it like whatever and you know i really had to have a conversation with myself about whether i was going to go down that route because i don't <laughs> i don't like the fact that we live in a world where people are mean to fat people i don't like the fact that we live in a world where you know, we shame people for their bodies, yeah, whatever I, their bodies may look like. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I really, you know, I really was like, oh, am I going to do this? And the only reason why I did it was because I was like, this guy's probably going to say some shit about how I look or sure. whatever. So I just have to like, I have to go in. Mm-hmm. Um, Body shaming is ugly, you say. Um, yeah, but, no, it's not nice. But I, he's I still fucking fat is what you say after. Oh, so. and he's, and you know what? He, he's not even, do you know what I mean? Like, no, no, but. <laughs> You know, he's he's bigger than he used to be, but like you know, I wouldn't call the dude fat, and not that it even matters. This is all, of course, all, you of know, course. I mean, you call it unnecessary categorization. Michelin man, um, yeah, you know, exaggerating for comic yeah, of effect, course, of course, and what, all of that. I mean, one of the things I like, Shonda, was you made a reference that I guess people our generation are the last generation who will get the reference. Not that it's niche or anything, <laughs> but you, you mentioned you mentioned Rick Waller, and I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, you know what I mean. My cousin, who's who's five years younger than me, wouldn't know who that was, but you know, it's so true. It's yeah. so true. Oh my god, that's yeah, that's like pop idol days, yeah, like before yeah, X yeah, Factor. Yeah, yeah. Darius. Yeah. What you know? What you know about that sixteen-year-old? <laughs> you don't. You don't know shit. What you know about Simon Cowell's <laughs> first TV appearance? It was gold. Um, oh man. You, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, that's you... that's a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lol. Um, <sighs> he wouldn't skip leg day. It's his favorite piece of chicken. Um, according to yourself. Oh, yeah. oh I, do you know what? As you're saying all of these bars back at me, I'm like, that's a that's shit. They're all <laughs> well, shit. Because I mean, you shit. know what? Like, the more I got into battle rap, the more I was like, oh. <laughs> but then the funny thing about me is, is that, you know, I think Soul and, um, you know, battle rappers like him, the very the Shocks, mm. you know, these very cerebral, um, clever battlers i think they're amazing but i probably only understand about 40 percent of their bars Mm -hmm. and when all the when everybody reacts and is slapping their chests and shit i'm there like what Hmm?" like i don't understand any of the references i'm not clever enough i don't because you know a lot of it is you know it's riddles it's it's uh you know triple entendres it's you know all this type of shit you know you have to be a gamer you have to have an encyclopedic knowledge of game of thrones and obscure 90s hip-hop and blah 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 i'm like i don't i don't fucking know i all i know about is rick waller mm-hmm. and <laughs> that's all you need to know do you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. oh god so lame you... but yeah now that you're reading these bars back at me i'm like no that's that's trash like, like i can't believe i got away with it <laughs> It's a good round, honestly. <laughs> the crowd love it. It works off cam, you know, watching his back. I think your, you know, your performance level obviously shines through here. And you're quite captivating. You're obviously very natural as well. Um, I think it was decent. Well, the thing is, is that I could have tried to do the things that I knew are are high currency in the battle rap world i could have tried to put on a persona that was a bit more swaggery a bit more oh i'm gonna try and be more like the lads i'm gonna try and Mm. you know match them on their vulgarity or match them on their whatever and it was like do you know what no like i'm a performer like i know how to be myself on stage and make that an engaging thing why would i not bring that do you know what i mean so that was a very conscientious decision on my part to not try and do it their way, quote unquote. Not that there's anything wrong with their way, but it was just like, well, I might as well come through, do my thing, like bring my own sort of self-aware, like sassy, but Mm kind of awkward style um, and commit to it because I know that it, it, it kind of is hiding. It's, 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 it's the shield that that masks, you know, some not so clever writing. But yeah, I think that 
that performance is just as much a part of it as anything else. I mean, my God, like how many battlers who are amazing writers, but you just don't really want to watch them because they're not, they haven't got charisma. They haven't got, they don't deliver things in such a way, you know? And then there are people who, you know, the, the writing's not shit hot, but my God, they just crack in your, I mean, there are so many battlers that you're watching and you're like, that line shouldn't be killing me, but it's killing me because of the mm-hmm. way they delivered it. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to bring what I know I can bring. And I know that I'm a good performer. I, I know that, um, yeah, I just know that I can bring it on that level. So mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bl- Blizzard plays with your round. Well, you know, the venue's the perfect fit for him, round guy in a round house, which, I mean... Yeah, that was that was a yeah, nice little... Yeah, it's fire. It's pretty... And he constructs it well as well. I'm not doing it justice. It's quite uh, it's quite subtle. And, you know, yeah. again, kind of on-the-nose stuff, Harry Baker at the party putting on Baroque classic era bangers, which I'd love to hear what they <laughs> sound like uh, for anything else, but uh, I'm sure Blizzard could, uh, could, could whip us up some. But, you know, all sure. in all... In all um, hugely successful debut i mean not to be pessimistic but as we may have any tryout it could have fell on its ass for whatever reason but definitely, you, you definitely. came out like you know hot stuff like uh, people were interested in you now as a commodity yeah i mean i don't fucking know like i immediately they after were. i was just i was just so happy to have got through it alive yeah. Um, I was just happy to not like for there to not be crickets like going in the room when I was doing my stuff. Um, because what you have to remember is before me, I'd watched two other poets die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was Instead. it? Um, Fahad, um, uh, yeah. With which, yeah. Which I, which I think, which I think got, didn't it get, Oh no, they did actually put it on YouTube. I thought it might've got vaulted. It did, um, yeah. lovely guy, but yeah, he really, you know, oh, yeah, really bodied, yeah. didn't, yeah, and then um, oh, Quill versus then, um, Shorgy Bear. Yeah, Shorgy yeah, Bear, yeah. lovely girl. Yeah. But again, you know, she got bodied. Yeah. So I just watched those two battles, and I was like, "Fuck!" Like, really, like, like, fuck, you know. Mm. So immediately after the battle, I was just glad that I didn't completely tit it up. Um, but yeah, everybody seemed to love it. And to be honest, I think when when people have zero expectations of you, of course, the only place to go is up from there. Um, so yeah, I don't think it was that it was a, a brilliant battle. I think it was a combination of the fact that it was entertaining and also people were just pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so oh my god, it's it's so it's so surreal to look back because honestly, I, it was pretty euphoric afterwards because I was so certain that I was going to fall on my ass. I was so certain that Blizzard was going to cook me. Um, yeah, so I just felt I felt amazing afterwards. It was it was pretty cool. And then and then you got to see Crafty and Harry Baker get bodied by Shufflo. I don't, I don't know about bodied. They lost. I don't know about. Okay, yeah, but bodied is too no, strong. I'm just trying to piss off Crafty because I know it annoys him when I mention it. <laughs> but uh, oh, um, Shufflo oh, were just on their sort of hype form. They weren't really Shufflo, no. but it was good. No, no one can really beat. Has anyone ever beaten Shufflo on doubles? No one. Uh, Mickey and Double L actually in a er- very early battle though, so it doesn't really okay. count. Not modern um, Shufflo, no. Right, sure, 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 sure. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was it was a really fun event. It was great, and it didn't really, I, you know, that isn't beatable in terms of experience for me. Mm. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. But then you know what? I don't really like. Uh, I don't really like. Well, I do, but like beating someone, like really beating someone, is like it's like it's like shit because I don't know. Maybe I'm an empath to a fault, but you know, I'm always thinking, ah, like oh, like. Have I hurt this person's feelings? Like, do they feel really shit? Like, is, uh, do you know what I mean? It's and I just think about though. how it's, I would feel. Okay. Okay. No, it's never nice to lose, though. It's never nice to lose. Um, particularly not in that way. And, like, you know, obviously, fuck the whole gender dynamic of it. But, you know, losing to a girl, losing to a poet, right. losing to a complete newcomer, like, blah, 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 all these things. Like, you know, I was just like, oh, you know just thinking about that um which you know again proves to you how much i am not cut out for battle rap because you can't think like that <laughs> you can't be all like oh, i don't want to hurt anyone's feelings um but yeah anyway it was me or him so he had yeah. to fucking do you know what i mean that was it mm-hmm. he had to yeah yeah but it's not my nature i'm not someone that relishes that in all honesty 
did you did you want to battle again afterwards quite soon or uh i can't remember you know maybe i did because i was a bit gassed and everyone was everyone was gassing me a bit mm. um so yeah maybe i did i don't know yeah 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 maybe i did and again it's kind of hard it's kind of hard to like look back but yeah i think i think i'd got the bug to a certain extent well it's it's literally hard to look back um shonda because unfortunately the battle isn't online anymore um is it not callum martin unfortunately oh you mean oh you mean oh you mean that one right yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's the next one right that was your second battle yeah, yeah, yeah. Three. yeah 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 three by. It's, yeah it's been taken down. it has callum did like a purge unfortunately of sort of all battle stuff including our explosive battle rock resume episode that, that is now lost to the ether but... blizzard <laughs> 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 from the fucking forum. <laughs> I ain't even got a mouth for that. <laughs> I come on in tight with new flows. Got that Rick Berry treasure. I'm Robinson Crusoe. I didn't know that had been taken down. Yeah. Uh, that's so yeah. well, you know. I mean, yeah, but it's a not even that it's annoying, but it's just a shame, really, for everyone. Because from what I remember, because we did that battle, me and Callum did, and it was it was a good battle, I thought, from you. I thought his rounds were quite short and you kind of just grew. No, because the problem is, is that I overwrite. I write two. They, they were supposed to be minute long hmm. um, <laughs> rounds. And like I told you, I'm really bad at editing because, you know, I try to cut lines and then it just fucks up the whole thing. And so I end up just doing overly long rounds. So Callum's were on time and mine were too long was what happened. Mm -hmm. um, I fucking love Callum. Big mm -hmm. up Callum. I haven't spoken to him in a while, but he's 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 absolute sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's, a sh it's a shame about that episode, but those people have heard it knows it was, uh, yeah, it was a uh, to totemic, well, but... Um, he, yeah, he, he said what he had to say. He said, yeah, he definitely did. And I compared it to the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, and I, I will continue <laughs> to. Like, if you look at Balrab history, like, you know, it is, uh, mm. you know, it's like our, our, our Watergate um, to a certain extent. But let's mm, get back, mm. um, you know, t to the battling as a whole, like... Obviously, it was never going to be a regular thing for you. I mean, or was it? Did you ever think you'd become like a fixture of the scene or were you just kind of like to do battles? Right. Let me tell you one thing. Yeah, I'm a full time artist. Right. And I am really on my hustle and I'm trying to make ends meet that way, like living independently off my art. Battlers, unless they are top tier, don't get paid. Oh, yeah. Right. So it was never going to be that. It was never going to be that, like, because of that, fundamentally, even if I loved it, even if I fucking loved it, loved the writing process, had the hunger to, like, work my way up the ranks, I have never worked that hard for something that I got paid nothing for. And I knew <laughs> that's what it was. I'm not saying that yeah. I got made to do something for free. Like, you know, it was no. totally my prerogative to say yes or no. Um, but... To be quite frank with you, I mean, this this proves how much people love it, but I'm like, I'm not out here trying to, because to prepare for a battle, even if it's just a th three rounds of one minute thing, we're talking weeks of prep, fucking weeks of prep, time that I could be spending writing and performing for good money, you know, um, and then the stress, the anxiety, like it's not like any other writing that I do where I quite enjoy it and I know that I'm going to go on stage and do a good job and whatever. Like there's always the chance that I could do all this work and still look like a fucking tit or be insulted or be made to look like a, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so for me, it was just like, I can't justify this. It's fun. Yeah, for sure. But like we're talking hours and hours and hours of unpaid labor i mean for other people that love it they wouldn't look at it like that but for me that kind of was what it was um and i guess i felt pressure to like stick at it because i was like cool like people are like you know excited to see a woman on there who's like kind of like interesting and you know blah blah blah, blah. and i tried to work around it so that you know i wasn't out of pocket or i wasn't inconveniencing myself too much mm. um tried to not commit to like doing long rounds like you know like huge battles whatever but um you got given zane though like very early a huge, <laughs> a huge battler which is awesome like you know you 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 seize these cool opportunities i mean yeah i mean actually oh no i i can't believe i said yes to that shit that's kind of crazy <sighs> i'm a crazy person because what you have to understand is zane as far as you know racism and, and sexism goes 
he's kind of up there, like probably like him and innuendo are like the two people. Like I remember so many times people telling me, right, just make sure you don't battle innuendo because mm-hmm. you are actually going to get upset. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and Zane, Zane, yeah. Zane Azra, I similarly, like, you know, I watched his stuff and yeah, it's funny and whatever, but it's also just unacceptable on so many levels. Sure. Um, so yeah, now I'm looking back and I'm like, Vanessa, what were you smoking? Um, <laughs> I think again, I just relish the challenge of it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's all bonkers. Mm. It's all bonkers. I can't believe I did it. Can't shame a man for not knowing what's what when his whole government's one whopping cock block. <laughs> That's just a fact. Fun fact number two. They banned all copies of the Origins of Species in 2003, which seemed astounding to me, but after hours of confusion, I find the conclusion of how this might be. Now imagine my man Darwin sits with you. Yeah. Try and tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put a picture in your head, yeah? It's cool. Visuals. <laughs> imagine my man Darwin sits with you. Now try and tell me that man wouldn't have pissed his boots. Zane stood here, puts his whole theory in disrepute. Yeah. And the Zane, the Zane battle wasn't, I, oh, you know, I tried to go for such and such an angle because I knew I couldn't be like, oh my God, you're a misogynist and you're racist and you're da 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 I mean, You go at his sort of his home nation, don't you, in the second? Yeah, I tried to drop some like mm. some trivia, some like Malaysian trivia. Mm. I don't know what the fuck I was trying to do. I don't know. The I always government was a cock like, block, he said, which is quite cool. I always, um, I always try and go against what people think I'll do because I know that people know I'm a poet, they know I'm a feminist, they know this, they know that. So I just always try and zig when everyone expects me to zag because. Mm. Yeah, I kind of went on this whole like, oh yeah, I actually really want to fuck Zayn Azrai. That was like, I was like, cool, let me just go with that angle. Mm-hmm. I don't know how well it worked, but you know, I was just like, let me just try it because there's no point trying to like shame him or trying to outgross him because I, I'm not comfortable saying the type of things he says. And then he also was trying to second guess it and he was trying to like not do what everyone was expecting him to do. So it all kind of went a little bit, it was a weird battle. I think, it was it's, a very I, think it's, I think it's pretty good, and it's a shame that it wasn't on the main channel. Oh, I mean, again, this is this is how you know that I'm not like in it deep like that. I don't give a shit. Sure. Do you know what but I mean? It's, just, it's, just, like, it's, 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 it's exposure as a freelance artist. You could, you could have went to hundreds oh, thousands. But exposure, more ex- oh, exposure. But I guess you're... to a kind of writing, yeah, and. True. A type of thing that, like, I'm not trying to make a name for myself for. Do you I, know do, what I, mean? I do sometimes think of all the all the primary school kids that search Harry Baker after he's came to came to their school to do a mathematics poem, <laughs> and then they find like Harry versus some horrific, like you know. But then what you'll notice about Harry is he's very particular about who he battles, and he's very particular about what he says. You will never hear him saying anything oh, yeah. homophobic or racist or sexist, and he can still he still you know cuts deep and still does you know what you need to do to win a battle but he is incredibly clever at not saying anything that you'd be like mate like why have you said that yeah um which is kind of the the magic of what he does because he somehow manages to like toe that line between being this poet who like does his amazing christian friendly like Mm. (laughs) uh, rap songs with his mate Chris all over the country and then also can like go and like completely body Charlie clips like I don't even know how he does it but like he's just towing that line perfectly he is um um he's kind of the anti-Zane really yeah yeah Uh, I mean he's 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 just an incredibly clever man is what he is um yeah i really i really rate what he does because it's not easy it's not easy for him to do what he does go up on a battle rap stage and own it and and what it actually demonstrates is when you just own the thing that should mean that you would flounder that it it becomes the best thing about you it becomes your usp it becomes yeah and people fucking rate you for being authentic and being yourself and not trying to put on something it's why shuffler was so great it's why Pedro is so great yeah. because they're not trying to be something or other. They're like, right, cool. Like, this is me. Let me lean all the way into it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But the Zayn the Zay battle was weird. It was weird. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, whatever. I got through it. <laughs> yeah, I've, I think I've... at this point, at this point, I was starting to be like, why, why, do, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he goes he, again, similar to Blizzard in the first. Like, you know, he's not necessarily going deep at you, but 
but he's kind of no. attacking quite offensive sort of targets, I suppose. I can't even remember what he said to me. What's what, what's interesting is that in in when I'm in the battle, I can't be thinking, I can't be focusing too much on what they're saying because I'm trying to remember my own rounds. Mm. And also, you don't really want to be letting things go to heart, you know, or mm. get to, get get to you. So you kind of yeah, you kind of have to just sort of haze in and out of things the only thing i remember is the rihanna the rihanna <laughs> reload that's the only yeah. thing i remember <laughs> um but other than that it's all a bit of a blur yeah and, and you know your, your nature on stage is so endearing to a certain level when you kind of you know you do your sort of heavy bars like purgatory pups make me gush the pups making gush like pervy tories uh taking the white stuff like thatcher in the early 80s and like you're oh, like don't, yeah don't... but no but yeah like you can't decide <laughs> don't don't repeat this stuff back mm. at me it makes me so ashamed um <laughs> no it's cool but you know what is do you know what's really do you know what's really funny about this whole thing is, you know, like as a woman, like getting up there and like doing it, like not only am I thinking, okay, like, you know, what, what are my bars? Like, what am I going to say? Like, how am I going to like conduct myself? I'm also like, you know, like, oh, like, how am I looking? Like, what, like, what, like, are people going to say anything about my outfit? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like I spend so much time worrying about what I'm going to wear as well for a battle. Um, because you can't wear anything that draws too much attention to your body. Like you have to just kind of be looking as neutral as possible mm -hmm. without looking too androgynous because then you're going to be getting some other type of shit. And it's just like, it's like a fucking mess. You know what I mean? And like, you don't want, it's, it's a very interesting thing to like observe how different female battlers are treated. So you have your, my verses who like are very beautiful and that, probably working in their favor in that they're not being called ugly bitches or whatever but then it right. just becomes a bit of a distraction right mm -hmm. and then you have battlers who are yeah you know a little bit more boyish in their presentation and that becoming a thing like you you, you just there is no way to be neutral there's no way to be or at least that's that's very much how i felt so you know that was that was another like stress on top of everything else because never mind what this person in front of you in the battle is going to say you're like what are people going to be writing in the comments about me you know and it's yeah it's stressful and i guess the guys must feel like that as well but it's just a different level of fear or or vulnerability as a woman for reasons that i hope i don't have to explain <laughs> sure sure but i mean obviously everyone reads the comments I mean, they, yeah. you know, they're, they're mostly nice to you. I always read them before episodes for Battlers and they're all pretty, you know. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Again, I prepared myself for um, racist stuff. I prepared sure. myself for like, who the fuck is she? She's like the ugliest fucking thing I've ever seen. I prepared myself for rape threats. I prepared myself for the worst things, right? Mm. Because you have to. And then it was actually all right, which is a, a wonderful thing you can do in life. You can just imagine the worst thing that could ever possibly happen and then usually that doesn't happen um so it's good because you're mentally prepared for it and then if it doesn't happen that's like a bonus um but yeah you know all of these things were running around my head like i couldn't just like it wasn't just about getting up there and doing my thing it was about always trying to like push against the fact that i'm a woman that that was always either in the back of my head or at the front of my head but it was never not in my head um yeah it's weird, isn't it? It's, I mean, it is still such a novelty. In 2017, it's kind of this weird... I, fro I, I, I mean, I, I understand why it is that, because obviously it's a rarity in of itself, just statistically, but it's just... It, it's never not going to have that, like, kind of uh, theme, is it? I mean, it's just not... To be quite frank with you, it's just not... It's not an environment that I believe your average woman would feel comfortable walking into. Mm. Whether because they look at it and they they misinterpret the 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 environment because actually I've been in those spaces and people are people and they're lovely a lot of the time they're friendly everyone's just there because they love battles it's chill but still you know when you're one of like six women in a room of two hundred three hundred dudes four of those women being wives and or girlfriends of battlers. It's just, it's, it's a weird thing. It's a weird vibe. And um, yeah, it's just not, it's not an environment that I ever, that I think is ever going to become 
more even because it's just a constant feedback loop of boys being boys and there not being enough people in that room to like challenge or disrupt a lot of the issues around the culture that that creates or the prejudices or um yeah the 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 issues that that creates Mm. and it goes round and round and round and round because women don't want to be in those spaces so it just becomes further entrenched in people's attitudes in that space and it's i don't really know what the solution is because there'll always be a few token women here and there always and actually there are a lot of casual female fans because when you're on viewpoint you see them there you know they're watching Mm. it on youtube it's the fact that they don't want to be in the room. They don't want to go buy a ticket and be in the room because it's a, it's a fucking, it's quite an intimidating space to be in, you know? So I don't really know. There's a lot of things that are never really going to get resolved in that sense because it's just such a, it's, oh my God, it's just so that, yeah. Hmm. In terms of, you know, going forward as a battler in yourself, then it was interesting you come back for Jay Short. You, you look up to Tony D, shock soul, you want to be that, but you stood here with me, the novelty act. The poet girl who battles for laughs, so here's your window of opportunity, I've shattered the glass. Now, people keep telling me there's no way I leave him dead and already I'm seeing red, but um, fuck the ginger jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pick your hopes on easy gags, bet you'd be pleased with that, but it's only right I make him sweat. You won't take a joke, but you'll take this threat. Four years in this league and don't fault, still can't be asked with him. So clearly you can't be king. Ain't got the right to reign. I'm on a higher plane. Your writing game don't impress me much. Shania Twain. <laughs> I was supposed to battle Dank yeah. Schrader and then he, he cancelled the last minute and then Jay Short stepped up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just ended up tweaking bars that I'd written for Dank and, and gave them to Jay Short instead. Yeah. And that was, that was quite a fun battle. It was cool. And he, he, gave, he had some good bars. I respect he's a good writer I respect mm. him um and that was that was all good and I actually got paid for that one so that was good because it was through the roundhouse um yeah yeah um that was a that was that was before everything kind of fell apart <laughs> yeah I mean what, what's your take on that from you know from just yeah, what's, oh, what's your take on it? stop asking me naughty questions um I don't have a take on it I think it's a real shame. I think it's a real shame. Mm. Um, I'm not really going to make any um, moral judgments on certain people or certain things that happen. I don't know what happened. I think that I think I think there's a lot of ego in the battle rap world. Um, I think again, and I think that's a lot to do with the fact that it's all a bunch of young dudes um, who get very caught up in the hierarchy that gets created in these worlds there's there's a there's a lack of um there's a lack of because friendships are so built on like oh well who are you and where do you rank and what can you do for me and what can i do for you and just just that 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 hyper masculinity of like you know having to like seem a certain way having to seem like the big man it just means that yeah when someone feels like they've been hard done by or someone it feels like they've been disrespected. Of course, things can't be dealt with in a in a compassionate or in a in a mature way. Like shit just hits the fan. That's what I can tell objectively from the way people have been talking to each other, from things I've been reading on Viewpoint. I don't know the ins and outs. Um, all I can say is it's a real shame because at the end of the day, don't flop is it's it's a it's a thing that provides entertainment and a a community and a real sense of joy to a lot of people and it's and it all kind of fell apart and you know people haven't been paid the way they should be paid people haven't been treated the way they should have been treated and it's a real shame it's a real shame and it looks like there's a lot of there's a lot of pain and upset and and mistreatment on many sides um, and I don't think it's about heroes and villains and right and wrong. You know, these things are always a lot more complicated than people want to make them out to be. Um, but I just think it's a real shame for the fans that just want to watch some videos, want to come to some events, people that have like made friends through Don't Flop, people who otherwise, I don't know, probably wouldn't have like people they could hang out with and and talk to. And it's a shame that it's kind of crumbled. I mean, I know that it's, 
kind of being built back up now, but I don't think it will ever be what it was. Um, it's a real shame. It's a real shame. Um, I don't know, man. I don't really, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get involved with like names and with this and with that. And, you know, cause I'm, I'm a classy bitch and, you know, I'm not about that. Um, <laughs> but it's just a shame to me because, you know, I'm I'm a sentimental person and I just believe that these things should be about people having somewhere to go, having, you know, we live in a secular world where we don't have churches anymore. We don't have those places where everyone gathers to 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 to, to worship the same thing and, and, and celebrate that and to celebrate each other. So we create our own churches, you know, and don't flop was a, a church for a lot of young men and boys and I think that's valuable and powerful um as problematic as it sometimes is and um it all kind of fell apart because people couldn't check their fucking egos that's how it looks like to me um people lost sight of what it was and what they were trying to create and the fact that you know this is an ecosystem it's not about me 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 like people have to look after each other you know you can rip each other to shreds on stage but you got to be looking after each other like outside of that you know what i mean so it's 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 a real shame it's a real shame in my opinion but um there will always be somewhere for people to go and watch battles as you can see people have really stepped up they've made their alternative platforms you got chalked out you got uh what's the other one danny's one uh red code red, code red. Mm -hmm. um you know gift of the gab has been about for a while you got king of the ronald there's always going to be a place for people to go so that's cool i guess um, I just, I just want people who need it and want it to have somewhere to go to watch that and to hang out and to make friends. That's, that's, that's all I care about. I don't really care about any of the other shit. I think it's really petty and, and childish and can only serve to make people sad and lonely. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a very long answer. Sorry. Are, are you ever going to battle again? <sighs> You can never say never, and I'm not going to have, you know, this freaking quoted back at me when I, you know, should I find myself in that situation again? I can't imagine doing it unless I was being paid substantially and it was someone that for whatever reason I was genuinely intrigued to battle. But then, you know, what I really understood after the, like the third, fourth battle was that I'm not, I'm not very good at it. Right. I can blag my way through it and bluff my way through it. But I'm not, I was a bit like, eh, I can just like keep going at this, or I can just be like, you know what, 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 like I had a good go and it was fun, but I'm not actually that great at it. Like I'm, I can't do any of them triple entendre soul bars that makes everyone go, ooh, ah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, makes everyone, except me, go, makes everyone except me go, ooh, because I don't fucking get it. Um, so yeah, like so. Part of me is like, oh, why, why put all that energy, weeks and weeks and weeks, into something that I'm never going to be that great at? When I could be spending that building on something that is already really great, and I know will only get greater, which is my my poetry and my performance and my theatre and all that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So, to be honest, I'm almost certain I won't. But who knows? Who knows? You can never say never yeah it's a, it's a fun creative footnote isn't it if anything else um for sure so, it's you know. so much fun and i met some lovely people and i and i really ate a great big whacking slice of humble pie because i had a lot of presumptions about the type of people i'd be meeting and you know who they'd be and how they'd behave and to be honest you know some of those stereotypes were proved right oh yeah but most times they were proved wrong and that was very humble me and i you know i even I even wrote a poem about it, you know, it's in my, this isn't even a plug, but this, you know, it just happened. It's just a poem I wrote about the fact that, you know, I went in there expecting to teach these misogynist boys a thing or two. And then I actually ended up learning more from them about writing, about, about boys and men and the way they, the way they interact with each other and the way their, their, their friendships are and, you know, I just, I feel like I learned a lot from the people that I met in Don't Flop. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. And um, I, you know, I just think there's something, there's something really beautiful about the environment as, 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 as aggressive and as, 
antagonistic as it may seem from the outside there's what what these boys are doing is they're all stood appreciating the way words can move you and the way we can paint pictures and 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 you know it's exactly the fucking same as poems Mm. It's exactly the same. And, you know, me me and Crafty, or as I would call him, Danny, because obviously he's in the poetry world as well, mm. you know, me and him both agree that, like, it's battle rappers are some of the best writers there are in this world because we know what it takes to write well for a battle. Um, and I fucking respect that. As many issues as I may have with the scene and some of its politics, I think it contains some of the most gifted writers that there are. Um, and I, you know, I will take anyone to task who disagrees with me on that, you know. Um, so, yeah, the, the the poem just kind of came from that and the really humbling experience of just putting my my assumptions aside and really being open to what that world could teach me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. OK, well, we'll close up with a few quick fire questions, um, as we okay. always do. I appreciate you maybe not the biggest battle fan for some of the other ones but we'll you know we'll see what happens um okay don't right. don't flop your favorite don't flop battle favorite don't flop battle mm. oh okay i love a tony t battle so which one of his do i like the best um probably him versus unanimous because mm. it's just yeah that's 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 pretty insane mm-hmm. um yeah i'll go for that okay. i'll go for that okay um do you watch much yeah. king, do you watch much king of the dark nah no, no i'm not no you see these american and canadian battles i'm like nah i don't i don't like the way they i don't like yeah again a lot of the references get lost on me mm-hmm. i guess it's a little bit too um a little bit too wrapped up in that old school thing of like you know how big's my gun which i'm mm-hmm. not interested in uh so yeah no i don't watch a lot of it i've only ever watched them when they've been battling british british battlers okay Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, URL no go zone as well. I'm guessing. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. No. Nah, that's that's like totally not the type of thing I enjoy watching. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we'll, we'll add an extra category here, um, seeing as it's yourself. Um, favorite poet. I have interest. Oh my god! All of the people listening to this are going to be like, "The fuck is going on?" Yeah. I'm not interested <laughs> in this. Um, I don't have a favorite poet because you know. Ah, like you know if you're a music fan and someone asks you who your favorite band are sure. that's an impossible question do you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh was and shire is definitely one of my favorites okay um i also love bog i think bogdan piaseki is amazing oh. i think toby campion is amazing i think uh oh i love so many poets and yes. you know i'm on a battle rap podcast so i'm not even going to carry on because you know <laughs> um but yeah i love yeah, a lot yeah, of poets yeah. Yeah, shout out um, Bogdan as well. Hit the Ode in Birmingham. I used to go to that quite a lot, actually. Uh, great spoken Bogdan word. Is, Bogdan is the guy, man. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, so final final two questions, non-battle rap related, you'll be glad to hear. Um, the first of which, your favourite film? My favourite film? Mm. Again, bonkers question. Anyone that's watched more than three films in their life cannot... Oh, no. Shot. Everyone has a favourite film. Deep down, everyone's got a favourite. Uh... Singing in the Rain is one of my favourites, ah, definitely. Nice, nice, good choice. I love Gene Kelly. Um, yeah, absolutely love it. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Go on, what's the last one? Your favourite musical artist or band that are in no way hip-hop related? Okay, so again, another bonkers question. Mm-hmm. That's what they're there like, for, you know? Okay, what, what's, blunt, yours? What's, yours? What's, what's yours? What's yours? Sorry? What's yours? Uh, Tom Waits. Okay, that's a good choice um i mean okay when you say not hip-hop related that's quite that's yeah really i'm like, just essentially that's ruling we... out a lot of that's ruling out a lot of artists because hip-hop yeah. is like tied up with jazz is tied up with r&b is tied up with mm-hmm. funk is tied up with soul is tied up with electro so what are you saying here i guess outwardly it's meant as an arch question because we've spent the last hour or so speaking about battle rap so i'm kind of avoiding you know verses on beats like if someone was to say a jazz musician i'm not gonna be like that's you know what i mean like uh, okay. it's kind of i appreciate the genesis but i guess i'm saying um, non-rap okay so yeah let's go with nina then nina simone okay okay nice 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 and i guess finally um how do people get at you your website your dates etc website vanessa bam 
um, nice and concise. Yeah. Um, Vanessa Casilio on Twitter. Um, I've got a Facebook page where I post all the stuff that I'm up to. Also Vanessa Casule, K-I-S-U-U-L-E. Um, yeah. And um, I've got a book that's come out a couple of days ago. It's called A Recipe for Sorcery. Mm. Um, you can buy that, particularly if you want to read this poem that I've written about Battle Rap Boys. Um, it's called Battle Rap Boys. Um, you, you, All of you are probably going to think it's quote unquote wet. I think that's what all of you guys tend to say whenever anyone says something. <laughs> I can't wait to read it. Implies, it implies that one might have emotions. <laughs> um, uh, oh God, you know, the horror. Um isn't it funny, you know, you know, all these, all these bars about look at my guns, look at my this, look at my that. And yet you're so fucking terrified of emotions. Mm. Um, anyway, that's a different conversation. Um, yeah. So if you're interested in buying the book, um, to read that poem or any of my other poems, then, then do go ahead. I feel like I've been very critical of the scene. I love, I, 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 I there's lots of things I love about the scene, but, um, I think it would be disingenuous of me to not, you know, go in a little bit on mm. yeah some of the some of the some of the things i feel limit it and 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 limit the people within it um but it all comes from a place of 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 yeah of of love and of respect so yeah all right well yeah this has been awesome um you know thank you so much for joining me and um, you know, just yeah. Obviously, all the links uh, to Shonda's stuff, to Vanessa's stuff, will be in the description below. So definitely follow them up. Check out all her videos, as well as all the battles. Um, subscribe to our channel, of course. Leave comments. Get in touch. Powerismagema.com, Patreon, all that stuff. But um, Shonda, finally, this has been a treat. Thank you for coming on. Oh, absolutely no worries. Thanks for having me. Yeah.